Hey everyone, how's it going? So it's been a little while since we've done a video and I thought we'd jump back into something that's come up in the Discord quite regu regularly and that is widget communication with outside blueprints or blueprint communication with widgets. So I thought what we'd do is we'll boot up the first person template rather than VR and we'll use that as a place to get started from just so we don't have to go in and out of the headset to do the exact same thing. Um, rather than putting widgets on the screen, I will do a 3D widget component, so that way it's in the level, and if you're doing VR, it's the exact same setup, so you won't have to worry about that. So so in this template, the first thing we need to do is set up our player to have a widget interaction. This is pretty simple. Um, what we can do is we can go to first person blueprints, and first person character. And for this one, because the the gun already has an input action, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a new add mapping context, connect the target to our enhanced input local player subsystem, and then we're gonna use weapons. So what this does is it passes our left click or mouse through to our main character essentially, and then we can use that here. So if we go to input mapping context, and we dock this window. We can actually open this up and we'll see our mapping. So interaction shoot, we've got our left mouse button, which is what we're after. So input action shoot, we can do input action underscore shoot. And from this, we can actually use this to fire our widget interaction. So what we need to do now is we need to go to components, add, and then widget. We've got a widget interaction component. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this to our first person camera. And then for interaction source, I'm going to do center screen. Um, that should be okay. Show debug. We'll turn that on. And then we're going to drag this in to our graph. And we're going to do press uh, pointer key. Plug that into started. And then left click on the little keyboard twice. And then for the next one, we're going to do release pointer key. Plug that into completed, I believe. We'll double check that in a second. But now if we do a print string, we should actually be able to press play and then see that our project is firing. So we can see in the top left, we've got our widgets. Although we can't see it on the screen, so we might have to change that from screen to world. Let's just see if that shows up. There we go. That'll do, it's not exactly perfect. Um, but if we set our position to zero, it should be in the center of our screen if I don't close the window. Yeah, it is there. It's just very difficult to see. So that is our widget interaction setup. So now we can actually interact with widgets in our level, not just attached to our screen. So we're going to do comment widget interaction. And then we're going to compile. So now what we can do is we can create a new folder and we're going to do new folder UMG. And for this, I'm just going to create a new actor. So blueprint class actor BP underscore widget display, because this one's going to display our widget. And then we're going to right click and we're going to user interface. We're going to create a widget blueprint. So use a widget. So widget blueprint underscore um, UMG main. We can change this afterwards if we need to. And then in the widget, what we're going to do is we're going to just use a canvas panel. If you don't want the UI to update on tick, so when your frame rate updates, you don't have to use canvas panel and it'll save performance if you use something like a border instead. But you can also wrap a canvas panel uh, with, I think it's a retainer box. Yeah, so retainer box. And then you can change, you can modify how much it updates and when. So we'd have our canvas panel. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag in a button, set it to center so we can actually see it on our screen. And point five. And in this one, we'll call this ETN underscore test button. We'll scroll down and just behind my head, we've got on clicked. So if I move my head, 
not the actual window. We can see that says unclicked, so we can click that and go back. Cool, let's pop me back. So unclicked, we're gonna do print string. I'm gonna say press button. Cool. So now in our blueprint, so BP widget display, what we can do is we can go to add and then widget, create a widget. And on the right hand side, we've got widget class. We can actually select our widget blueprint underscore UMG main. And we can see it display here. And then we can also do draw desired size, which will help. So now what we can do is we can drag this into our level. Rotate it around like so. And now if we go up to it, we can see that we can click on it and it says pressed button. Cool. So now the question is, how do we make this button do something for us? So what you could do is if you're in the, the UMG, you could have your code set up here to go through and then pass it back. But what we're going to do is we're going to use an event dispatcher because I want to show you how you can send information from the widget something simple as a button press to the blueprint for BP widget display so we can actually have it do something in here. So in the UMG main, we've got our button. We're gonna create an event dispatcher and we're gonna call this button pressed. And then compile, drag that event dispatcher in and we're gonna call it from our button clicked. So now what we can do is in our BP widget display, on begin play, so when it spawns, we could cast to our specific widget. So we know that is WBP underscore UMG main. And for our object, we're gonna drag in our widget component and then get user widget object. Connect that like so, and then promote this to a variable. So with our variable set, what we can do is we can actually use this to listen or create an event dispatcher to listen to our UMG to see if the button's being pressed. So for the button, what we do is on begin play, we can actually use this variable. So I'm gonna just get a new one and we're gonna do assign button pressed just so it creates the custom event for us. And then I can plug this onto the begin play. So when we begin play, we get a reference to our widget and then we're essentially just listening to see if the button has been pressed that is in it. These event dispatches typically work much better between UMG to UMG, which I'll show you in a minute, but they also work between the blueprints so you can go through. So they are hard referenced. So if you change the widget, this will break, but with something like this, you typically have the same widget or you could have a master which we'll go over as well. So now if we do a print string, so, so let's do listening for button. And now if we press play and jump in, when we go over to it and we press it, you can see that we're now listening to the button. So we're going from the widget to the blueprint and the blueprint can tell us what to do. So in this case, we could have it talk to another pro another blueprint and we could use an interface for that. So let's say we're gonna do that. We have a blueprint class, actor BP underscore um, change material. And this could be a cube. And by default, it's gonna be white and we're gonna change the color of this. So what we could do is we could do a custom event and we could reference the actor from it. But what we'll do instead is we'll create an event dispatcher. So that way, no matter what object is in the world, our essentially blueprint widget display can talk to it. So it's not gonna be a solid reference. So blueprints, blueprint interface, BP, BPI underscore change Material. And then if we open this up, we're going to create a new function called change material, a compile. And we only need to set it up to go through. 
But we'll come back to this and we're gonna we're gonna modify this so we can add some more information to it. So in our change material blueprint, just so I don't get lost, what we want to do is we can delete these and we can go to class settings, implement interface, BPI change material. Hit compile and now if we search for event change material, we can have this fire. And let's do a flip flop. We'll get the cube. Set material. So the first one through A, first time fires is going to change it to something else. In this case, we'll use the sharing red. And what we'll do is we'll use the material for basic shape. So basic shape material, target is our cube and go through. So now we've got an interface set up in our cube that is going to change the materials. We could tell our BP widget display. So the one that contains our widget, what actor it is we want to fire that event from. So to do that, we need a reference to the actor in the scene. So we can do a new variable. And we set this as actor. So actor object reference, rename, change material. So this really doesn't care what variable is in it as long as it's an actor. And then we use that to say, if it has this blueprint interface, we're gonna change the material. So we can say let's change material and we want the message because we're sending a message to that blueprint from this one and then we can have that fire. So if I bring in the cube change material, which we've got, so change material, and that is not the right one, there is. Cool. And then double check where our blueprint is for widget display. Let's say, there we go. So now if we press it, nothing's gonna happen because I press play without changing the reference or setting the reference. So in BP widget display, we want to make sure change material has a little eyeball on it, which we forgot to do. And then I need to figure out why this is hidden in here. Uh, so apparently I pressed a little pin by accident. So change material, what we can do is we can use a little eyedropper and we can select this blueprint and you'll see that says BP change material. And now if we press play, we can go up to the button and when we press it, we're changing the material. So what's happening is we've got our widget display, which contains our widget. Our widget has an event dispatcher, which talks to, or our widget display listens to, and then it changes the display. So if we go from the top down, we've got our widget, which has the event dispatcher, which we're calling, just say the button has been pressed. We then go to our widget display, which gets our widget component, which we're using to display the widget in the scene. And then from that reference, we listen to that event dispatcher to see if it's actually being fired. If it is, we call the change material blueprint interface, which then talks to the change material blueprint, which is set inside, which the interface is set inside of, which is exactly what we want. So now we can go up and we can press this button and we can change the material and go that way. So let's say we want to create a more detailed uh, UMG what we could do is we could have widget blueprint, user widget, widget blueprint, underscore um, color button. So let's say this is just gonna be a single button. It's gonna be huge. Let's do, uh, if we do the button and then we'll wrap it so we can control it. Let's make this look to a point. So I'm gonna change these settings and I'll be right back. So if you want to sit through and watch all of them, and now that I've changed the settings, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it with a size box. So wrap with size box, and that'll give us access to the horizontal alignment and vertical alignment. And you can see these are really small, so I'm just gonna go ahead and increase the size of these to let's say 250 by 250, or let's do 600 by 250. So I'm gonna go through and set these. If you do have a custom image, for your design, for your UMG, then you don't have to set these. It'll do it automatically. But because I'm just using the default boxes, I'm just gonna go through. Cool. So now we have a button. We're gonna add some text. What I've done is 
remove the size box and then set it to center center so it makes it look really big but the difference is that once you bring it into another widget which we're going to do it will actually allow us to resize it as well it'll just be the text that stays the same which is really cool and now what we can do is we can actually set up a way for our other umg to tell the text what to be in this so we can reuse this as like a prefab so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to graph and then event construct we're going to set text so we should be able to get that set text. Let me double check that I've made it a variable. I did not. So txt underscore default text. By default, it says text block. So now it's a variable. I can actually access this from our UMG graph. Drag this in, get, and then set text. Set text brackets text. Plug that into event construct. Actually, in this case, we'll do pre-construct so it happens beforehand. So then we can set that up. And then what we can do is we can actually promote this to a variable. And then we can say this is in text and we can have this as public. And what I normally do is have a custom event. So if I right click no custom event, we can do set text. And what this will do is allow other blueprints to set this button text. So if we're spawning these into a, a UMG, we can actually have the same control over it. So copy that down. And we can go from there. So what's happening here is on event pre-construct, we get the information from our text variable or in text. And then we set that. So now if we go to our UMG main, which was the first widget we created, what we do is we can delete that button and that. And now we can actually go in and take user created. So widget blueprint color button and drag this in. Let's set the anchor point to top. And you can see on the right, we've got a text box because we made that variable public. So we can say make material red or we'll just do red. We can duplicate this, red, blue, and then green. And I'm gonna take all of these and I'm gonna wrap them with a horizontal box. Cool. Fill, and then anchor center, hop zero, zero, and then 0.5. And now we can actually move these down so now we've got green, red, and blue buttons. And we can actually play around with these settings to get them into a nice position. Cool. Hit compile. And now we need to get these through to our other blueprint. So now in the widget blueprint color button, we need to do another event dispatcher. So we say when this button is pressed, so just so there's something in there. We can actually select this button and do unclicked event dispatcher um, button pressed because it can be used for anything. We're going to call it. Excellent. So file save all. And now in our BP UMG main, which contains the instances of that button with three different ones. And the cool thing with this is because the dispatchers exist inside of the color button, what we can do is rather than doubling up, so having each one of these have their own event dispatcher again, such as button pressed, which we aren't using, what we could do is just go straight to our widget display, so the blueprint that's being displayed, drag in and search for green, so we can get button green, and we can assign button pressed. And then we'll call this green button pressed. And then go through and do the same thing for red button. And then blue button. Assign button pressed. And then assign button pressed. Cool. 
So now we've taken one UMG, we kind of skipped the middleman, which is the main UMG that's being used to view it. And then we can go straight through to the blueprint itself. And the best part is, is because we're spawning, the, if you wanted to spawn these buttons into, let's say a scroll box, so they were dynamic, you could then call each one as long as you had a reference to it from within the blueprint of the main, which is so cool. So now it's a case of figuring out what button or what color we're gonna pass through. So we could have an individual UMG or a blueprint interface, sorry, for each one. But what we could do is we could just use an int variable. So we call, um, it would be change color, what did I call it blueprint interface? Change material, that's what it was. So change material message do that for each one and then obviously if these were to fire it would just change the material is the same one and it would just go back and forth but what we can do is in our interface if we think about it we can assign each one a number so we could give it an int and then call it something like material id so if we know each material has a certain number we can then go to change material ID and we can do switch on int. So by default, we're gonna have the last one in the list. And then what we can do is we can have three materials. The cube. So double check the order that we've got it. So green, red, blue. And while we're here, we can actually give these a number. So we can say a zero, one, two. So green, red, blue. Where are we? Green, red, blue. So green, red, blue, cool green, red, and blue. And then default is gonna be the first one. And we gotta decide which one we're gonna start with. So we start with white and then it'll loop around. Cool. So now, if I take this widget, we just scale this down a little bit. We could have this placed over the top. Oh, it's my, my target. <laughs> I didn't give it change material. So it doesn't know what actor we're actually pointing at. That's on me. So that variable is the one that we've got assigned here, change material. So if we go into it, we can go up and we can say green, red, and blue. And then we can kind of do that all the way through. But what I want to show you is that if you do change or modify the buttons, because they're an instance, essentially, you can get away with actually doing some creative stuff. So. You only have to change it once to make it look better. And then when you do compile, you go to main, you can see that actually updates for you. So then you've got them updated in here. And then I haven't updated the right ones, but you can see we've got green, red, and blue. So that's pretty much the main way to do blueprint communication. I know it's a bit long-winded, but it was to try and bring it down as much as possible and show you that you just need some event dispatches and a blueprint interface, and then you can do quite a lot with this, especially if you think about how these widgets can be created and then go through and set these up. So we've literally just got a button prefab, which is essentially what it is, where we say event pre-construct, set text, and custom event. So that set text, let's say we have uh, one of these buttons, so change material. If we find the, I want the blueprint, widget display. So if we're in here, we've got these green, these variables, so we can actually do um, set text call function beforehand. So we can call that custom event, and then in the widget, we pass the set text variable through to the custom event. 
So now in um, BP widget display, you can see that we've got that here. So now I can change the text inside of the widget. That's like three widgets in. So rather than blue, we can have this as orange or rather than green, it's going to be orange. So when we press play, it doesn't update. So why didn't that update? It's doing it because event preconstruct is overwriting the set text because this happens faster. So what I could do is very annoying because if I put a delay in here, so that might be something to play around with, but the video's already gone on long enough. Um, what I want to do is say a big thank you. Like I can't stress this enough to all the Patreons who make these videos possible. I know it's been a little while since I made some stuff. Life's just been crazy and mental, but I'm trying to get back on track. So if you want to download these files and you want to take a dive into this, I'll go through and I'll comment that all out now. And then you'll be able to hop over to the Patreon and grab this as part of the thank you tier. And make sure to head over to the Discord. There's a link in the bottom if we can get the direction right. And then you can answer any more questions you might have. But hopefully the idea that you're using event dispatches with Blueprint interfaces to send information between not only UMG to Blueprints, but UMG to UMG to Blueprints might actually be able to help helpful for you guys. And this might help you think a little bit differently to how you set some of this stuff up. Um, but yeah, so I'm currently working on some more videos. If you've got any ideas for any of this, anything you want to see, it doesn't have to be VR. It could be anything. Let me know in the comment section and we'll be able to jump in and take a look at some of those and see how we all get on. But yeah, until next time, stay safe and I'll see you all then. Bye.